Welcome to the final portion of making this needle felted fox. We're going to work on the very last step, which is making the fox's face. I'm just taking some white roving, the same that I used on the chest, and I'm sort of breaking it and rolling it and just making the fiber shorter. And I'm going to use this for the white parts of the fox's muzzle. And I know it looks already like it's pretty light in color, just the undyed core wool roving. You could probably just leave it if you wanted, but you can see the difference. At least in the wool that I have, you can see the difference between the core wool roving and the, the white roving itself. So for the one that I'm making, it would be noticeable. So I'm making sure that I cover all of the white areas of the muzzle with the white roving. And as we lay down the pattern for the fox's face, it's a good idea to have a reference that you have that you can look at. It can be just images of this fox from my Facebook page or just an image search for red foxes in general so that you can see where the patterning is going to be. In these areas of the fox's face, the fur would be really short, so I'm not trying to worry about making it so that the fibers are really sticking out anywhere, but I am trying to keep the direction of the fibers accurate with respect to the way that the fur would grow on the fox's face so that it's still believable.
While I'm working on this side of the fox, I just want to point out the shape that the nose has right now. It's very rounded. It is not going to stay that way. Part of the rounded look is that the mouth part of the front of the muzzle, um, right above the mouth, is a little puffy still from where I added the white roving. And also, I've left an area on the tip of the nose where I'm going to actually add the nose of the fox, which is going to give it a more pointy look. So that in combination with, with working on the, the slanted shape of the front of the muzzle is going to really change the look of the muzzle before this is finished. I'm still just adding pumpkin to the facial features. Um, there's sort of a, a divot in the pattern of the, the reddish color on the fox's face. So it comes off of the nose, heads back toward the eye, and then there's this little part uh, on the sides of the muzzle that it's kind of near where the whiskers are, and the, the pattern comes down a little bit right there. So it'll be like that on both sides of the face. And as we add the black to the patterning in the face, that's an area that's also going to have a little bit of black. This is black wool bat. It's not roving, but uh, I could use the roving if I didn't already happen to have a whole bunch of wool bat. I just grabbed the bat because it's already got shorter fibers and just kind of more ready to be shaped. You can do the same thing with the roving though. Just break it in your fingers and roll it and break it until you get it into workable wool. And I folded the black kind of kind of into a little triangle pillow shape. And now I'm attaching all along the edges of it so that it gets sort of that triangular shape. And it's not really a perfect triangle. Um, again, I would just say really look at a, a reference photo. I'm going to just attach it. For now and then I will use the needle to really poke in where the nostrils would be and then felt down the center about halfway down the center um, there's a little crease in the nose a lot of this just isn't going to show up in the video or I feel like even in the photos that I took of the fox but in person, you'll be able to see the little divots of the nostrils and the little stripe down the center of the nose. Filling in the pumpkin color at the tip of the nose so that there isn't white still showing up against the nose. And I'm going to continue to work on the, the whole nose itself, um, that it's not too much of a, a Roman nose or it doesn't have that, that curved 
I don't want it to go from the black part of the nose and then sort of curve upward. I want it to be flat from the, the tip of the nose to basically between the eyes. I want it to make a nice, smooth, flat plane. And here I'm working on the nostrils, just making sure that there's a clear indentation where the nostrils are. So I'm using the black 36T needle because it, it's a thicker needle and it can really stab. Here I switch back to the black needle because I'm really trying to make sure that the mouth line is really defined and I just feel like this needle's really robust. Now I'm taking some of the reddish nutmeg color and I'm going to put this around the eyes so just right above the eyes on the brow and right below the eyes. One thing to keep in mind, the eyes that are inside the sockets of this box are a perfect circle. And that's not the way that a fox's eyes look when we look at the eyes. Um, we have to create the shape of the eye using the wool. So we want to keep reinforcing those angles that come off of the brow, that comes down to a point um, in the lower uh, outer part of the eyes and then it sort of raises up at the inner part it's sort of a triangle shape I guess and we want to just make sure that we keep that shape so as as the roving is added here I'm making sure to keep the shape of the eye and when we add black we'll do the same thing and we'll just really define the shape of the fox's eye using the wool I realize this is a really frustrating view. I just took some of the reddish roving and kind of rolled it into a small ball and I'm using that to thicken the brow area right above the eye. Another not so great view, but I'm just putting in that reddish roving just beneath the eye.
Now I'm going to take some small pieces of the white roving and start building up from the neck area to the cheeks. So I'm just attaching this roving the same way that I've done it the whole time. Just going down a center line and then folding over. Then I'm going to do this on both sides of the face, just building up the puffiness of the fox's cheeks. What I'm doing here is just taking the needle and sort of brushing across the pumpkin area um, under the eye and I'm stretching that pumpkin roving and then pushing upward like felting it in a little higher pushing it and then felting it in like lifting up and tucking in so I'm, I'm basically raising up that area where the orangey color is under the eye and I'm going to add some more white to the chin area. I want to create a transition between the really short fur of the muzzle to the longer fur on the cheeks. So I will usually just felt it on one end and then let it kind of hang over the thicker fluffy area on the other end without being really tightly felted. So right there at this at this seam sort of of the area underneath the eye where the start of the cheeks just sort of letting the the wool lay over the longer fluffier area so that it sort of blends together. I'm just going to repeat that on the fox's right side. Here I'm just putting a little bit of that reddish roving right at the base of the head, where it is near the shoulder there. Just I saw a spot that I felt like I needed to bring it up a little higher before I continued working on the, the face and the size of the cheeks.
I'm really just looking for symmetry right now. So I'm just checking the right and the left sides. I'm going to add a little bit more white to smooth that line of orange that's beneath the eye. And then I'm going to tug down on the outer portion. So I'm just using the needle to sort of brush and tug against the orange roving and pull it how I want it to be. This is the pumpkin roving. I'm going to build up the cheeks with the pumpkin just right behind where I have the white. I'm going to put the pumpkin in there and I'm trying to put it in so that it's sort of dense and pushes the white roving forward so that it doesn't, the fox doesn't lose the fluffiness of its cheeks. So as I am felting this pumpkin color in place, I'm sort of trying to felt it directionally forward, I guess, is how I would describe it, so that it's pushing the white part forward. So you can see that the shape of the muzzle is a little bit better now. It's a little bit more pointy now that the nose is actually on there, but I'm going to go ahead and slope this a little bit more. So I'm just using this felting pen uh, along the tip of the muzzle to create even more of a sloped angle. just cleaning up any loose fibers around the eyes, making sure that it's all tucked in and smooth looking. And add a little bit more white over here on his right cheek. And then I'm going to take some of the pumpkin roving and I'm going to try and get rid of the seam that is showing where the shorter fur on the fox's face is meeting up with the cheek fur. So I'm just laying this strip of roving across all the way from you know above the eye and letting it overlap with that cheek fur and just sort of attaching it just to reduce the sharpness of where the transition is between the forehead in front of the ears and the fluffy cheeks. So I'm just attaching just the one side really and then I'm going to let the other one, the end of it sort of hang off sort of just stabbing various places of, of that fur that hangs off so that it is not all even, so that you get different depths of fur. I'm just repeating that here. So I kind of push backward on some of the fibers so that some of them are shorter and some are longer. tugging again in that area to blend it into the white a little better.
this pumpkin that I'm applying to the forehead, I'm going to leave it long at the edges that are facing toward the ears because eventually I'm going to want to have some fluffy orangish wool that is sticking up in front of the ears. Just taking some black wool and rolling it so that it becomes semi-felted in a long, skinny roll. And this part is really challenging now in terms of how to hold the fox and where to hold it without causing extra felting in certain areas. But I'm just kind of grabbing the fox by the muzzle as best as I can and I'm going to let this black create the outline of the mouth. You really don't want to leave this black line very thick. It won't look very realistic. So I'm just going to keep tucking at this and felting it in so that the line becomes thinner. Then I just decided I wanted to work on the definition of the eye at the area of the tear duct. Just make sure that that angle was nice and crisp. Just adding a really teensy amount um, of the black roving at the corner of the mouth here. It just wasn't quite long enough. So I'm adding in just a little bit more. So it's a little bit longer. And I just did the same thing with black wool here, just kind of rolled it so that it's starting to felt. And I'm attaching it right at the tear duct of the eye. And then I'm going to work this around the eye, really focusing on keeping the triangular shape. So I went straight up, right up to the top inner corner of the eye. And now I'm going to take it down at an angle to that outer corner of the eye. I really want to keep this tight up against the, the eye in the socket there so that we don't see any of the red wool coming through so that it's just black directly against the eye. And at first it's a little bit thick and puffy, but I just keep felting it in so that it becomes really a thin line. I leave it a little thicker on the top, um, but the underneath especially I want it to be thin. And then 
I'm going to do the same thing on the other eye. As I wrap this black wool around the eye, it goes through a, a phase where you can't see the orangey color of the eye, but all you have to do is just keep felting that black into the eye socket and it'll start to reveal the color of the eye again. And you just want to get it till it's a really thin black eyeliner around the eyes. And I didn't have quite enough on this one, it just wasn't quite a long enough piece, so I'm just adding a little bit more. And this, you know, it's it's not really, it's a really easy part of it, I feel. Because if you have slightly too much, you just keep pushing it in until you have just the amount that you want showing. And if it's, you know, covering too much of the eye, it's too thick, you just felt it tighter, push more of it in. So just be paying attention to the shape that you're trying to create with the black. Like if you look right here um, at the shape of that outline of the eye, that's the shape that we're going for on both sides. I'm just taking a really teeny amount of the black roving and laying some fibers to extend from that corner, the outer corner of the eye that creates that angled shape that comes down off of the brow.
just taking black wool and putting it inside the ears so that uh, the entire back part of the ear, like looking straight back in it, looks blackish. And then also, um, see the white part that's right there on the head part? Well, yeah, this is a really great view. Um, I don't want any of the, the core wool roving to be showing. So I'm filling in the back part of the ear with black and also I'm going to fill in the head that is directly under where the ears are at. I'm going to put black right here. I'm just tightening up that, that ear tip, just making that shape more pointy. So right here, I'm going to fill in black right there on the head just inside the ear. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side so that we're not seeing that core wool roving. I'm adding more black wool to the ear tips just to extend out the portion of the ear that's black. And as I do this, I am holding the tips of the ears with my, my left hand so that I can keep them pulled forward so that I don't end up with the ears like leaning way too far back. Here I'm just tightening up the sides of the muzzle a little bit. I felt like it was a little too thick looking and I wanted it to be a little bit more dainty. So in this next part, we're going to start putting the white fur inside the ears. So I have a small piece of white roving that I'm going to just insert along the inner line of the ear. And I'm just doing this the same way that I put any of the roving on the fox where I wanted it to remain long. So on the inner portion of the ears, I'm going to want it to be furry like this. There's also going to be white on the outer portion of the ears but I'm not going to emphasize it, it being quite so long and fluffy as it is right here. I still want to leave that black edge of the ear, but I want there to be white just inside the black edge. Doing this does poke that white directly through to the back of the ear so that right now on the backs of the ears there's white fuzz sticking out, but that's really easy to fix at the end. We'll just lay some black down on top of the backs of the ears and it'll hide all of that. So now this piece of white roving I'm going to put in the outer edge of the ear. 
and I'm just going to leave it kind of fuzzy, but I'm not going to focus on having super long fibers. Here I'm just putting little bits of black roving to cover any of the white roving that pierced through to the back of the ears. And do keep in mind that this video is sped up. So right now this is at 400% the actual speed. Um, I'm really slow and careful when I do this sort of thing, especially in these little areas where it's really easy to poke yourself. I'm just adding a really thin strip of the pumpkin roving across that edge where the side of the face meets up with the cheeks. And I'm just kind of making that area near the black streak of the eye, a little more natural looking. Here I'm just very, very slightly editing the way the line um, that goes down into the muzzle looks and the line under the eyes. just doing a little bit of fine-tuning of the eye shape just making sure they're exactly how I want and then as I look at the fox um, I decide that the nose is just slightly um, toward the fox's right 
of center, so I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on the nose, pushing it a little closer toward the fox's left. And as I do that, I was felting it in place just to hold it. It was just a very slight adjustment. Just tightening up this muzzle region, making it a little more dainty. some really small pieces of the pumpkin roving to lay down in front of the ears. I just want to create a little bit of orange fur that's sticking up in front of the ear. So I'm only going to felt on the front portion of this roving and I'm going to let that back portion just stay sticking up right in front of the ears. Now here I'm putting on a little bit of the reddish color and it's going to be in a sort of inverted V shape just from about the height of the eyes and then up into the center of the forehead. And this is going to be felted down fairly flat like the rest of um, the wool right here in this portion of its face, but I'm going to keep those fibers going in the right direction because you will be able to see it at least up close you can see the directionality of the fibers and you just want it to look like it's fur growing in that direction I'm putting in some more of the reddish uh, nutmeg colored roving right around the eyes, uh, around the little tear duct area, right beneath the black portion of the eye. And I'm going to do it just also right above the eyes again on the brow. I'm trying to darken that area. And I'm pretty sure that at the very, very end of making this fox, right before I put the whiskers in. I think I actually added a tiny bit of a darker reddish brown roving. Um, and I don't have video showing that part, but it is exactly what I'm doing right now. So you might refer back to these steps, um, but it's just the same exact spot. I just wanted to darken it even further. So right here under the eye, right on the brow, and then um, there's a spot right above 
the inner portion of the eye where there will be little black sort of eyebrow whiskers that come out and that portion needs to be darkened as well. But I'll explain it more when we get to that part. Here I'm taking the reddish nutmeg roving across the brow and I'm going to let the fibers hang over a little bit um, over the black area that comes from the outer corner of the eye just to sort of blend it a little bit more. That, that black will still show up, especially from the front, but just so it doesn't just look like a black stripe right there. Next I'm going to add a really tiny bit of black wool to the sides of the muzzle. So in that red area right there where it kind of the pattern comes down, I'm just going to very carefully spread up just a tiny amount of black fibers. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Just a very tiny amount. In fact, that amount that I just sat on there is too much. So I'm just kind of getting some of it hooked in there and then I'm going to peel off about half of what's there. So just a little bit of black and I'm going to sort of blend it across the white area and the orangish area. And this is also the area where we'll be putting whiskers later. And I think I, I think I would get this, um, Maybe just a little darker than what I've made it here. I'm pretty sure that at the end I darkened this somehow. So I think leave it how I had it just then. Like I just kind of tugged away a bunch of it and I'm kind of pushing it further back and only making it dark in one little spot. I don't know. I mean this could be a little too picky but I think you know it's gonna look fine even if you don't put as much black. I could probably leave it just like it is now, but I'm pretty sure that I do add just a little bit more black, more like how it looked a little bit ago. And definitely this side I don't think has quite as much black as it ends up with. So if you want to go ahead and add just a touch more black than is there, you know, you could refer to the final pictures of this fox and see about how much black is there. just adding even more of the reddish nutmeg, nutmeg color on to the pattern right here on the forehead where it's just a little bit darker where there's sort of that inverted V shape from the eyes upward onto the forehead just darkening it even more
pumpkin robing that I'm laying in is um, just along the inner portion of the ears and it's where the fur sort of is more puffed up where it meets up with the ear where the fur kind of is standing up more. This part's really tough to see, but I'm just adding a little bit more of the pumpkin right near the front edge of the ear. So I'm doing the same exact thing that I that you just saw me do um, on the little further back on the ear, but it's in the front. And I'm kind of letting some of those fibers just kind of tie into this forehead area that's above the eye, just to give it all a fuzzy, a fuzzy look. And I'm making sure to note here with text on the screen when I switch between reddish and pumpkin. And in case it's kind of confusing what I'm doing right now, I'm putting the pumpkin around the cheek area. So any of the area that I'm considering still part of that cheek fur is, is pumpkin. And the rest of the back of the head, so this is still pumpkin, uh, the rest of the back of the head is going to be more the reddish color, but all of this area is more the little cheeks, the puffy little cheeks. So along the backs of the ears, I'm doing reddish, and um, I'll probably alternate with a little bit of pumpkin just to make it look like you see a little bit of undercoat sticking up there because that's one of the places where the fur is sort of standing more puffed out at the base of the ears. So alternating those colors kind of gives that illusion.
this next piece of roving that I'm going to lay down, I'm going to felt the front edge all the way down and I'm only going to leave the back edge furry. I'm going to start transitioning from the roving that's already on the forehead to blend in with the back of the head. So I'm actually felting down the front portion of the wool rather than folding it over. adding a little bit of the pumpkin roving to make the transition between the pumpkin color on the forehead to the reddish color on the back of the head um, more seamless. Just looking at the fox, the overall shape of the head, and if everything's looking how I want, and I decide that I want to work on um, making the outline of the muzzle, the nose, a little more smooth and straight, and the forehead too. So just kind of working on that a little bit, tucking this whole area a little more so it's a little more smooth, the slant right there. fine-tuning the ear. I'm going to add a little bit more white um, to just bring the white, especially on the outer portion of the ear, a lot closer to the edge. So there's less of a um, black outline visible from the head-on view of the fox looking straight on just to make that the black edge thinner on the outside of the ear. It's a little bit more pumpkin and I'm doing kind of similar to what we did earlier, just adding some that will stick up along the cheek and in front of the ear. So there's some orange sticking up in front of the ear. I think I just trimmed a little bit that was sticking out weird. All right, I'm not totally sure if this is the case, but I feel like it looks like I added more color here. So um, I'm gonna point out the areas that I really feel like are darkened and I don't have video to go with it. Um, so if you look at the fox, this is the final, the final uh, product. In this area, I feel like there's some darker brown and so it would be the same as like at the 55 minute mark, that area that we were adding red to, add brown. And then this area, add more black. And those little eyebrow marks need a little bit of black before the whiskers go in. Now I'm gonna add the whiskers. Uh, I just used tacky glue. And I used some doll hair that I have in the description. I just have little pieces. And I dip my felting needle in the tacky glue and then just uh, touch it to one of the doll hairs. And I'm going to poke this into the muzzle. And uh, this is gonna look uh, pretty easy. And it's, it's actually a little bit challenging, <laughs> it can be. So the whiskers actually went in real nicely. You can kind of see that makes it look like two little whiskers. And I'm just gonna repeat this process and then I'll just trim off any that are too long. I don't 
see it right there on the tip of the needle. I don't worry too much about the length and you know measuring these or anything. I just have little strands that I have. You can see here there are now four little whiskers sticking out. And as long as the needle doesn't get too sticky, this is pretty easy. But if it starts to stick and you feel like you're really struggling with the little um, doll hairs clinging to the needle, then go wash your needle. And at the end of this, I do wash the needle because this is my felting needle. The tacky glue comes off really easily in water um, as long as you do it pretty you know, within maybe 10 or 15 minutes of using it. I've never had any problems. And if any of the whiskers are going the wrong direction, they're actually really easy to fix just by tugging some of the wool that's in the vicinity of the whisker around it and you can point them and direct them just by felting right around them at the end if you want to. And I'm going to do this also for the little brow whiskers in the little, those two little spots that I put a very thin little patch of black wool. It's just a, that's where the little um, brow whiskers will go and there will be two that I'm going to poke into each side so that it's a total of four little teensy black whiskers coming out at the brows. And if ever you, it goes in and it's not quite at the right angle, because this does take a little bit of practice to get them to go in, you have to kind of stab them in at the angle that you want them to remain. And if they're not at the right angle, you know, just pull them out. The glue doesn't dry instantly or anything, so you are you have working time. And I struggle with these. Um, there's going to be a few points, I'm sure, in this video where my needle starts to get too sticky and the whiskers just keep sticking and to the needle and coming right back out. So it takes a little bit of fiddling around with and I think a couple of times I just don't like the way it is so I pull it out and start over. Um, but it's not too hard. It's, it's, just, it's just a fiddly process. And this particular whisker is obviously way too long, this little brown whisker, so I am going to cut that to be shorter. So right here I just trimmed it. There's a little piece stuck there by the, the ear. I'll just get rid of that. And that whisker did not stick, so I just pulled it off, put more glue on the needle, I'm going to try again. Just trimming these a little. So I try to push this whisker in and then it gets stuck. So I'm going to try it again. And it's still stuck to the needle. The needle's getting too sticky. I'm going to try it again. 
and I finally, I think I got it on, nope, I didn't pull it off. <laughs> I'm going to have to clean the needle and then see if I can get this to work. All right, it stayed in that time. I'm just kind of tugging around some of the wool right there just to make sure that the whisker is going in the direction that I want. Here I'm just kind of messing with the direction of these brow whiskers. Here I'm actually adding in a new one. I wasn't totally satisfied with the way it looked, so I, I put another whisker in there. And that's it. That's the final whisker for this little guy. He's all done. And I hope that somehow this tutorial was able to help. Um, hopefully it wasn't too frustrating when my hand was blocking view, and hopefully I was able to explain things well enough that you were able to make your own little fox. Thanks so much, and be sure to check out my Facebook page. I do try to do at least um, one annual giveaway, and I'm hoping to have some new items available that I'm really excited about. So thanks again.